point. Anyway, the second uh, questions. Oh, yeah, the lady. Hi, good morning. My name is uh, Ria Villanueva and I work in Collins Aerospace. I wanted to get your perspective and because you've worked with a lot of multinationals. Um, I come from an environment uh, before where agility was one of the things that was necessary for an organization to be competitive. In a highly matrixed multinational, perhaps say uh, what you mentioned earlier, um, uh, Unilever as an example, or any other multinationals, what are the biggest challenges that you think they face in making themselves competitive in the different parts of the world where they operate in? That's one. And second, how do they overcome these um, challenges? So I'm struggling a little bit because you're asking me such a broad question. Are you asking me about how they deal with the matrix structure? That's one. Uh, where uh, Normally, a matrix structure would be a hindrance to being, or a highly matrixed one, would be a hindrance to being as agile as you want to be, and as flexible as you want to be to change in a pace that's required to be competitive. So, uh, what what would be what would what have you seen in the studies or in your interactions with the multinationals well, that help them overcome these situations? Okay, thank you for that clarification. Well, one thing that I would say is that we, my organization, we work across industries, and we, the three sectors that we work with the most are tech, financial services, and the whole sort of health, bio life sciences, and we always are interested in the fact that tech, they don't care about structure. They're they're way too busy, changing, and, and there's so much going on. They don't really get too upset about whether a line is solid or dotted or too solid or too dotted. They just ignore it. Whereas in the other industries, we see it really matters. And so the ones where we've seen leaders, that either there's two paths. One path is you de-emphasize the importance of reporting all clients and relationships, but that requires commitment at the most senior level of the organization. The other path is that you make sure you're really good clarifying roles, responsibilities, relationships. Um, what Edgar Schein is that one of, he's like the grandfather of OD and somebody that in my career I learned so much from. And one of my favorite quotes from uh, Dr. Schein is that 90% of all conflict in organizations is due to role ambiguity. And American companies in particular, and maybe sometimes what European multinationals, they don't think about the importance of clarity for a reporting line. And so what we see is that organizations, either they get rid of they, they de-emphasize them, and then they have people who can deal with it, or they keep the structure and they get really good talking about decision rights. It's not a book that sits on a shelf. It's not a racy diagram, but it's a, a set of rules around you know, what happens when the, the solid and dotted leader disagree? How do they get resolution to that 